Hi, and welcome back to a new five-part series of Cooking with Nick. I'm Nick Rizzo, and during this session, I will show you with a little pre-planning how to produce a four-course delicious and healthy meal in under an hour. So sit back, relax, grab a pencil and paper to take notes so you can make this meal at home. My class is ready, and they look hungry, so I have to get started. For tonight, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to we're gonna, we have the piccata. Uh, basically, what piccata means is is it's meat that comes with the lemon caper sauce. Okay, so what you can do chicken piccata, pork piccata, you know, ham piccata, whatever you want to do, you can use piccata. Piccata is basically the the way the chicken's cut is very thin. Okay, so the meat is very very thin. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to have, we're going to start out with tomato, spinach, and mushroom soup. I'll show you how to make that. A very good soup that freezes well. Okay, you can put it in a container, make it, make a big batch, put it in the freezer, it freezes well. It's always good to whip out, have for lunch, or whatever. Very easy to make, and it makes a lot. Okay, so you, I mean, you can't make soup for two people. Okay, you can't make, you can't do that. So we'll do that. Um, then we're going to go on to... Uh, the side dish, which is a quick, really quick baked ziti, okay? Uh, everybody has their version of baked ziti. Some have ricotta cheese in it. Some have different kinds of cheese, four different kinds of cheeses, whatever. I'll show you how to make that. It's real simple. Uh, with a little preparation, you can have it done in, in 20 minutes, okay? Um, then I'll make the chicken piccata and then show you how to do that. Um, save a little money on the kind of chicken to purchase when you do that, okay? Because and then we're going to have a chocolate ricotta cream with some ladyfinger dippers for dessert, okay? And that's a dessert. A lot of people don't use ricotta cheese for dessert. But I, I like ricotta cheese. So, you know, if you cream it in your food processor, it gets really, really smooth, and it, it comes out like a mousse. So I'll show you how to make that. Very, very quick, very simple dessert. This, this recipe right here will probably be one of your go-to meals if you have people come in for dinner and you want to make something really quick. And with a little preparation, you can have this on the table in 40 minutes. You're all done. Okay, so that's going to be our goal tonight. I'm going to have all of this done in 45 minutes. Okay, by 8 o'clock you will all be, have eaten dinner, be stuffed, and on your way home. Okay, so I'm going to give you the recipes and then we'll get started. I want to thank Izzy for helping me do the recipes. Thank you. And we have, we have royalty here tonight, so I want you to know that uh, Maggie's visiting from England. She actually, she actually works for the Queen. So. <laughs> okay, get my hands up quick. I did wash my hands before. I'm just going to wash them again before we get started. Hmm? Uh, all the, the they're all filled. Yeah, unless somebody cancels, and I'll give you a call if somebody. If it's just one or two. One. Okay, I, I can, uh, if somebody cancels, I can give you a call. Okay, so what happened is I had like groups of people wanted to take it like three at a time, you know, or four, and then so I got kind of over on a couple, you know, but um, the reason I like to keep it to 12 is because what I do is I'll prepare a dinner for six while I'm up here, and that's what the recipe is basically designed for, except for the soup. Well, they're Italian recipes, so you know it's going to feed more than six. Okay, so, uh, so that's basically what I do. And then at home, I, bring, I do a prep, and I bring six with me that I've already done. So everybody will get to eat. So when you see me making only six up here, you don't have to cut the chicken breast in half, okay? You don't have to share it. You know, people used to get nervous about that. Okay, so if we're ready, we're going to get started. I'm going to start with the soup. That's the first thing I'm going to do, because once we finish the soup, and that's ready to go, I'm going to prep the ziti and get that ready to go in the oven. In the meantime, you're going to eat, okay? You eat in courses here, okay? You'll have the soup first, then you'll have the side dish and the piccata, and then you'll have dessert, okay? So that's how that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is get the pot going, and basically what I'm going to, 
I, I really never cook with a recipe, <laughs> so this is very hard for me to do this. So uh, I have Linda who sits in the front and makes sure everything gets in it, okay? <laughs> because sometimes it, it, it changes. So, uh, but believe me, when I, made, when I do the prep at home, I follow the recipe and they all work. So don't worry about that, they don't work, okay? And you could talk to each other because by the end of the night, you're all going to smell like garlic and lemon. So, you know. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in uh, uh, some olive oil just to coat the bottom of this soup pot. Just, uh, you know, not a whole lot, just to get it going. Let that heat up a little bit. We follow the recipe. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up some onion. This is just a regular yellow onion. Um, you could get frozen onions, which I never knew they had in the store, frozen chopped onions. Did you ever see those? I discovered those one day in the store. But I tried them, and they're very watery. You know, so uh, I guess if you defrost them really well and stick them on a paper towel, they would be okay. But some things it's better to just cut up. Now, because this is going to be a soup, it's going to be a chunky soup, so we're not going to mince anything. We're just going to do rough chop. Okay, so let me get this going. One time I moved this pail over here by me and I walked right over it, so. <laughs> but but uh, our, cameraman, our, cameraman is, our cameraman is very good and he edits out like some of the Italian words that he doesn't know what they mean or, you know, or uh, a lot of the other, some of the other stuff that goes on here. So uh, we'll get that going. So I'm just gonna rough chop this onion and get it in the pot. And how do we know that when we put the onions in there, how do you, how do you basically know when they're ready to add other stuff? They turn translucent and they start to sweat, okay? So just like us, when they sweat, they smell. And that's, that's how you know they're ready to go, so. Okay, that's what you want to hear. You always want to preheat your pot. You want to make sure that the pot is ready for you and you're not ready, you know, it's not waiting for you to heat up, so. We get that in there. And I have in this jar a combination of salt and pepper. Okay, it's half salt, half pepper. And I like to do that and I keep it on the counter because most of the recipes you look at say add salt and pepper. Okay, so why have two containers? Just add salt and pepper. So I, so I mix it together and throw it in there. Okay, and at this point I'm just going to add a little bit of salt just so that it draws the moisture out of the onions and the onions and start to sweat. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Okay, so we got those in. Get mushrooms. And garlic. Of course, you have to have garlic. Okay. So what I do is I, I put garlic in a baggie like this when you get the whole clove. You know how it's hard to pull them apart? If you put them in a baggie like this, or a sandwich bag, and put them in there and just smash it, the cloves will fall apart. Okay, so then you'll have individual little cloves which is a lot easier to get out than trying to dig in there and pull them out. So, and then to get them going, give them a smash and the skins come right off, okay? If you have people in your house who don't like to eat garlic, but they like the taste of garlic, okay, some people, uh, you know, they eat the garlic and they, they get what Italian, it's called agita, you know, you, get, you know, and you taste the garlic. So some people don't like that taste. So if, if you have people in your house who like that, put the whole clove garlic in there, saute it, and then at the end just take it out. So you'll have all the garlic taste, but you won't have the garlic in there. Does anybody in here get agita? Nope, too bad. So, so I'll put that one in. This one I'm gonna give a little chop, okay? Just to spread it around. Now you wanna make sure you have something in the pot before you put the garlic in, otherwise the garlic burns very, very quickly. Okay, so you wanna make sure you have that in there. Okay, so those, I don't know if you could see up there, but they're starting to turn a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is add the mushrooms. And these are uh, baby bella mushrooms. You can use white mushrooms. But they, the mushrooms, whether you buy them whole or whether you buy them sliced, are basically the same price when you go to the store. So I always buy them sliced. It's much easier. Okay, so I don't know how much the recipe calls for, but I'm going to put in about three quarters of this. Okay. I like mushrooms. 
Of course, I'm not eating this soup. You are. So, does anybody like mushrooms? Okay, so I'll, I'll put that in. That's, that looks good. Okay, give it a stir. Okay, now when you're sautéing mushrooms, a good hint for you is if you want them to get color on it, if you want them to get a little bit brown, never add salt. If you add salt, what's going to happen? It draws the moisture out and they'll steam. They will never ever brown. They'll just steam. Okay, so you've got to make sure you're careful with that. Okay, put that in. And we're just going to let them brown a little bit because we don't want them to get really, really cooked because we want to taste it in the soup. So I know some of you don't like pepper flakes, but I'm going to add just a little bit because, you know, by the time you get to eat the soup, you're going to be, you know, sitting back. I know you worked all day. So I'll put a little pepper flakes in here and get back in your throat, perk you right up. Okay? So put a little bit in. Get that going. What else is in here? Let's see. Pepper flakes, garlic. And let this go. And we're basically going to use uh, chicken stock or chicken broth. Uh, Chicken stock, everybody goes, what's the difference between stock and broth? Stock is when you put the whole chicken in and it has the bones and the gristle and skin and everything. And then when it's done and you put it in the refrigerator, it gets very gelatinous. You know, it looks like pudding. That's stock, okay? Chicken broth is made from when you cook a chicken and it's the juice that's on the bottom, you know, that you make the gravy out of. That's, that's the chicken broth, okay? So I'm going to use chicken broth. And this is, uh, oh, I guess I didn't get it. Usually I get the kind that has low sodium because I don't really cook with a whole lot of salt. So basically from here on in, what we're doing is throwing everything in the pot. Okay, so. Okay, so we add this. Okay. And we're going to add diced tomatoes. Okay, I'm using the diced tomatoes that are seasoned. Okay, if you don't want them, you can use the regular kind. But, uh, or if you have fresh tomatoes, you could do fresh tomatoes. If you can them yourself, you can use canned tomatoes. I, I would like to can vegetables, but the deer ate everything in my yard. So they ate tomatoes, they ate, they ate everything except uh, the celery. That's probably because I didn't put any dip out there. And, uh, and the uh, eggplant. For some reason, they did not eat the eggplant. Huh? I, everybody put hair out there. I go to the beauty shop, get the hair that's left on the floor, throw that around. Uh, put marigolds. They ate darlings. They jumped over the marigolds, right? Uh, you know, I tried everything. I bought a spray over at uh, Home Depot that you spray I around. Spray they didn't do anything. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so I don't know, you know, they eat like, they eat like everything. So, it's, so, okay, so we got that going here now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water to that once we, once we get this up and running here. Because sometimes that stock is, uh, it's, it's real thick. I mean, it's got, a, it's got a heavy taste. So let's just add a little bit of water to it. Okay, these are white beans that we're going to add. And what I'm, I'm not going to drain these, okay? That's why I like to use low-sodium stuff because the, the stuff that the beans are in is kind of like a brine, a little salty. But um, what that does is it thickens the soup up a little bit. So I'm, gonna leave, I'm not going to drain them. I'm just going to leave that in there. My wife made me buy a can opener that opens on the side. You know, but I, I, I don't know where it is, <laughs> so I don't. <laughs> That's only because I cut my finger one time when, it, when I was opening. The last can I was opening, and I cut my finger right, and I had to go to the emergency room. <laughs> Everybody in the emergency room at Westfield was very concerned and said, oh, you should get one of those can openers that opens on the side. I said, yeah, okay. So we got one. <laughs> okay, so we got that in there. Uh, I'm going to use some frozen spinach. That's in here somewhere. Did I take it out? Oh, here it is. It was defrosting in the sink. This is just regular frozen spinach that I, you know, took out of the freezer right before I came in. And you're going to throw that in. Okay. 
give it a stir. Okay, and that's basically what that soup is. So we, we basically have everything in the soup, real simple and easy and quick to make. So, you, you know, yeah. you let that simmer a little bit. Um, oops. Garlic flying around here. So we could, uh, if you wanted to make this a real hearty kind of soup. You didn't put the Italian seasoning in. Oh, Italian seasoning, okay. I was going to taste it, and we'll, then we'll figure it out later, you know. But this is, a, you know, Italian seasoning. Maybe yeah, you can put that in. I'll just, how much does it say? Teaspoon. Okay. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to let it come to a boil, and then we're going to taste it. Then you can tell if it needs salt, whatever. Okay. As I started to say, if you wanted to make this a real hearty, hearty soup, what you can do is uh, take some leftover chicken. A roasted chicken, you could put that in there. Uh, if you, if you, uh, if you really like the people who are coming to dinner, you could put shrimp in it. You know, <laughs> or if you could put sausage. You can take, uh, you know, sausage that's already cooked, or you could put it in the beginning and saute it with the onions. Make sausage, and it makes it makes a one-pot meal. And then all you need is a nice big loaf of Italian bread, and you're all set to go. So. Uh, a lot of things you can do with this. So when I give you these recipes, these recipes are only a starting point. What I want you to do with, if you try any of this stuff is to take it home and work with it and see if it, you know, adjust it to how you want it to be. So and that's basically how we operate. Okay, so we have the soup going. That's going to come to a quick simmer if I have the right burner on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you were here for the class when I did, when I was cooking and I went like, I put them over here and it was supposed to be the back burner. Well, the front one was on, boop, you know, it was on fire. So, you know, so yeah, I know. Well, these, uh, the, the, these knobs are a different location because my stove at home, the top is gas and the oven is electric. So I have two different systems in there. And the, these knobs are in different spots. So I'm always putting the wrong one on because at yeah, my house I could probably do a blindfolded, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, like you do. So, okay, we're going to let that go and put the cover on it. Let that come to a, a little bit of simmer. Well, first, let's, uh, let's give a, uh, Izzy, you want to taste? Oh, sure. <laughs> now, remember, I, I didn't put a whole lot of salt in here. So, uh, what we're going to do at the end, I'll put out some, shre uh, some shredded Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you could sprinkle that on top when you eat your soup. So... Good, need salt. Well, I love a lot of salt, so don't go by. Remember, we're going to put Parmesan cheese on the top, so that has a lot of salt in it, okay? It's good. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm finding garlic all over the place. I don't know what I do with it. I hit that bag, it went flying. <laughs> do you have any garlic in your hair? <laughs> okay. So we're going to let that go. And now I'm going to start on the, the big ziti, okay? So... That's going to be on your second page of your recipe. We'll get, the, we'll get that in the oven because by the time that's finished cooking, the piccata will be done. The piccata takes about, about five minutes to make from start to finish, real easy. Okay, so we're going to start with the ziti. Now, a trick that you can use at home is to pre-cook or par-cook the pasta. If you know you're going to be using pasta during the week, what I usually do is on a Sunday afternoon, you know, we're watching the Bills game or whatever we're doing there. Um, and I know like by Thursday I'm going to make something with pasta in it. I'll par cook it. And what that means is what it says on the package, like it'll say like al dente 11 minutes or whatever. Uh, cook it about, about two or three minutes less than that, okay? Uh, run it under cold water, cool it, put it in a bag, and put some olive oil in the bag. And this will stay in your refrigerator for about five days. Okay, so when you're getting ready to have dinner, you put the boiling water on, throw the pasta in, it takes two minutes to cook. Okay, put your sauce on and then you're ready to go. Okay, so if you're going to be making soup, like a lot of soups I'll make have pasta in it, I'll, you know, pre-cook that and put it in like little cups, set it to cup baggies and keep it in the refrigerator and then add it to the soup at the last minute. Otherwise, if you put the pasta in the soup when you first make it, what's going to happen to it? It get, the you know noodles get about this big and it gets all mushy, 
So just when you have the soup, if you wanted to add pasta to the soup, just heat it up, have that pasta pre-cooked, and add it in at the very end. Okay, and then, then the pasta stays whole and doesn't get all mushy. Okay, so that's a good trick that my, my sister showed me how to do. Now this baked ziti is very easy. I'm going to use a disposable pan because then we can just throw it away. Okay, but when you're home and you have a fancy dish you want to use, then you'd use that, you know. Like, it, like there are some people that I, that I cook for and, you know, sometimes I work as a personal chef, so I have people that make me cook in their dishes, you know. They don't want anybody to know that they didn't make it, so. I told them, I said, as long as you pay me and I walk out the back door, I don't care what you do with the air <laughs> probably, you know. But this is about, uh, about a little over a pound I made, so you people look hungry, so. And for those of you who've been here before, I, I, use, I use Italian measurements, so which means that there's always stuff left over, <laughs> you know? So, so I know some people usually come with, with containers that they know they're gonna take stuff home. So I brought some containers, by the way. So, okay, so we had that. I have some uh, gravy or uh, sauce. My wife goes crazy when I tell her that because I, my family always refers to it as gravy. Do you call it gravy when you make it? Like Sunday gravy or, okay. We always call it gravy. So, uh, Sauce. Yeah, it's spaghetti sauce, but we call it gravy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I don't, and she's always going, it's not, that's not gravy, gravy's brown, I said, okay, you tell my family that. <laughs> okay, so I have this, and uh, you can use whatever sauce you like, you like hunt sauce or whatever, you know, this, uh, this I just made, so I just, I'm going to use it. So these are quart containers, which are nice to have. You know, uh, you could buy some of the, uh, uh, what do they call the Tupperware, not Tupperware, the Rubbermaid. Rubbermaid stuff. They have the ones that are measured. They have like four cups and it tells you exactly how much is in it, which are kind of nice to use if you're not sure of yourself. So I'm just gonna pour this on. Okay, put that on, check our soup. Give that a stir. If you don't like the mushrooms that big, just dice them. Okay, I like to see the big chunks of mushrooms in it, so that's why I didn't chop them further. If your family or you don't like those, just, just dice them. You'll see when we, when we dish it out that it's like the big slices of mushrooms, but I like that. It's like eating a piece of meat, you know, so. Okay, so we have that going. And then uh, I'm going to add, this is uh, shredded Parmesan cheese, okay? It, it's not great, not grated, it's shredded, okay? I think the shredded has a lot more flavor, you know, it's like big shards, okay? So I'm going to throw, like that, eh, this looks like about a half a cup, doesn't it? I don't know. Okay, got that in there. And just a little, little, a little kick, Maggie. Don't, don't get your British shorts and your bloomers, I guess, in an uproar. <laughs> so I'll just put a little pinch in there. Okay, I'm going to add a little Italian seasoning in here just to spice it up a little. That's fine. That was popular. Okay, and you could, <laughs> you could kind of put in whatever you want. If you wanted to, you have meatballs left over. You could put chopped, in, chopped over meatballs in here. You could put leftover chicken in here. Uh, you could put uh, all kinds of fresh vegetables in here. Uh, uh, a ziti, then you get a big ziti with fresh vegetables. Okay, so, so that's also very good. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a quick stir and get the cheese in there. The one with fresh vegetables is something that, that we make at our house all the time. I, I like that. Uh, and sometimes we'll make it instead of with a, with a red sauce, we'll use an Alfredo sauce. So you can use that. Okay. And if you don't, if you don't want to make Alfredo sauce, you can just, uh, you know, go buy it. But Alfredo sauce basically is, is uh, cream and Parmesan cheese. That's basically all it is. So you mix that together, you have a little salt and pepper, and you have Alfredo sauce, okay? None of the uh, Italian sauces are really that difficult to make because 
Italian people always had to work a lot, so they made things that were really quick, you know, so, he, so they did that. Okay, I'm going to top this with, I don't have any fresh parsley because the deer ate it. So, <laughs> I was going to go out and get some, but it's gone. So I'm going to top this with um, uh, mozzarella cheese. I see the soup pot's going. Take that off a little. Okay, I'm going to cover this with nice cheese. You never have enough cheese. Okay. okay. And then what you can do on top is you, you put some, sprinkle some parsley on top and it gives it a little bit of color on top. So I'm going to pop this into the oven. We're going to go over here. I'm going to, we're going to have some soup. And then I'm going to get ready for the chicken piccata. Okay, so by the time this is done, You'll have your soup, and we'll get ready on the piccata. How long should I put that in for? This the ziti? Uh, it probably uh, maybe twenty minutes. Yeah, you'll see. It'll start to bubble. So you, you'll you'll see when it bubbles. Okay. Okay. The soup really does not have to take long to cook because basically everything in there was cooked. The tomatoes were cooked. The mushrooms, you want them to be a little crunchy. You don't want them to be mushy. Uh, and the onions, you want them to be a little crunchy so you taste it when you eat it. Okay? So this is basically ready to go. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to that. If I could find a... I have a new teacher in here, so everything's moved around. This is the last time I was here. I'm just going to add about a cup of water. Okay, so that's ready to go. What's going to happen now? I'll set this over here. Uh, you guys will, you have to serve yourself. I will cook for you. I'm not serving you. <laughs> okay, so I'll put everything over here. Or it will be easier over there. I'll put everything over there because it'll be easier for you. Then we don't have to move the camera. I'll put some bowls, spoons. Okay, see if we can find ladle. <laughs> just stick your hand in and get it. Yeah, just a, yeah, like, <laughs> gotta be a ladle here somewhere. Aha. Okay. Let me get some spoons. Now I bought these are premium strength. So when we get to the chicken, I'm hoping that they, these little knives in here cut the chicken. <laughs> Otherwise, just pick it up and eat it like you're at a picnic. <laughs> okay, time to eat. Okay, glad you enjoyed the soup. There's plenty there to take home, so I'll put some containers out there and you can take the rest of that home. We're going to move. We have the uh, baked ziti is in the oven. The cheese is just starting to melt on the top of it, so we'll be ready to go. Um, I'm going to show you the difference between uh, the amount of money you can save. These are, and I'm just using this for the class, these are thin cut chicken breasts, okay, which is what you want to use when you make piccata. You, you want them really thin. Um, these, these sell for $4.99 a pound, okay? You could buy regular chicken breasts for $1.99 a pound. All you have to do is take the chicken breasts and cut it in half, put it between wax paper or saran wrap, pound it down a little bit and make it thin, okay? So you save yourself quite a bit of money if you do it that way, okay? I, just, I, I wanted to bring these in just to show you. The other ones I have in the oven, I did that way. I cut them in half and made them made them myself. But this I wanted to show you because I wanted you to see the price on these. Uh, you know, you could save a lot of money by just making your own. So what we're going to do is we're going to use those uh, and we're going to flour them. All that piccata does is take, you, you season flour, you, you dredge the cutlets in the flour, and you, you fry them. 
you, uh, you know, not deep fry them, but I'm going to put a little bit of, I'm going to use vegetable oil in this because kind of olive oil uh, uh, it doesn't hold the temperature as well, you know, so I'm going to use vegetable oil a little bit. Usually use canola, well, th this is canola oil, so, you know, I like canola oil and vegetable oil. So we want to get, you want to get the pan nice and hot before you put the chicken breast in because you want them to get a nice little crust on it. So what I'm going to do is get this going. Uh, I'm going to put, the, put this on medium high, okay, just, just to get it heated up because it won't take us very long to do this. Uh, when you want to flour stuff and you don't want to make a big mess, you know how messy it is when you're flouring things, get, get a piece of foil like this, heavy duty foil, and we're going to make like a little box like when you were in kindergarten. You know, you just fold the edges over and then just open it up like this. Okay, so you end up with like a little pan. Okay, and then what you do with this is just throw it away because you can't use the flour again, you know, because it's cooked and you, you're putting it in the chicken. Okay, so I have some flour here. This is just plain regular old flour. Well, it's not old, but I mean, it's just regular flour. <laughs> <laughs> So just throw that in there, and we're going to season it. I'm going to add some salt and pepper. And basically when it says season the flour, that's all it is. Salt and pepper, and sometimes a little garlic powder. You could put that in. Okay, so put that in. Give that a little zhuzh, get it around there. Okay, there you have seasoned flour. Okay, we have our cutlets all ready to go. If I was going to make this at home, I would cut them in half, put them between uh, saran wrap, or instead of saran wrap, what I use is one of those gallon baggies, and I just cut the edges off because that's a lot thicker, and it holds up. You can do a whole lot of pounding on that one, and it holds up really well. Just make sure you moisten the inside of it with water because that allows the meat to slide. Sometimes if you put it in dry and you start to pound it, it'll shred. Okay, so just put water in there, and it'll help it spread out. Okay, so these are... Thin cut chicken breasts. You can see fairly thin, okay? I'm just going to dredge them in here. And when you dredge the, the chicken, all you're doing is just coating it real quickly. You're not, you're not dipping it in an egg and you know everything else. So just Okay, one more here. You know, this is, this is very hard for me because when I'm home, do you think I use these tongs? No, it never happens. Do you use them? No. Use them when you get it out of the pan. <laughs> so, and then you're supposed to use one hand for dry, one hand for wet. I always forget which one it is because, you know, because I'm the dyslexic cook. I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, just, okay. But, there. I'm trying to be like the people on TV. Yeah. <laughs> so, and if you want to test to see if the oil's hot enough, you take a little bit of the. Oh, I thought you were gonna put your finger. In. A little bit of that, <laughs> and put that in there, <laughs> or, or dip your finger in. It. So it's not quite hot enough yet. So I'm gonna turn that up a little bit. Okay. Now again, what I did at home is I made some of the sauce. You know, so uh, what I'll do is when we get this going, we'll make sauce in the pan, and then we'll, then I'll add that to it because I have I have more cutlass in the you know keeping warm in the oven there. So one time when I was teaching a class, somebody asked me that because I did I did six, and there were like fourteen people in the class, and they said, "Do we have to cut those in half, or how are we going to eat those?" I said, "You have a problem with that?" You know, they were like, you know, I said, "No, there's a backup. Don't worry." <laughs> That's like I was, I used to keep a towel, there's a drawer right here. So I always hung a towel over here. So I was always going like this. And everybody wanted to know if I was wiping my hands on my pants, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so then I said, no, because so, I didn't wear an apron. So then I, I said, I guess I better wear an apron so people know that I'm not wiping the hands all over the place. Okay, that sounds good. So I'm gonna get these in here. And because these are so thin, it, it's not going to take very long. Well, 
Oh, I smell cheese, so it's either the ZD's getting there or my deodorant's not working. <laughs> so let me see what's going on here. Oh, it looks good. Okay, That'll, that's going to be just, just right when we're ready to go. So we're going to get that going. Okay, these are, uh, what you add is capers. We're going to add some capers in there. And we're going to drain them, because these are, in, they're like a, a, a vinegary brine. And what they are, are they're, they're flower buds from a caper plant. That's what they are. Uh, I, I, I like these. I like the taste of them. Some people don't like it. If you don't like them, just like, you know, pick them out a little bit. But the, the flavor, it, it gives the sauce a nice flavor, okay? Uh, this, I hope this is white wine. Okay, white wine. Got to make sure. <laughs> what else would it be? I, I don't know. I went to the doctor today. You know what that could be. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, It is white wine. I just wanted to make sure my, my, wife, my wife always yells at me. She says, you can't bring that. You're working up in the school. I said, but I'm cooking with it. I'm not serving it. You know, so. Uh, okay, so these are going. Let me get the rest of these going here. I bought two packages. I didn't know how many were in each package. You got to be careful when you buy those because sometimes you don't know. How, it doesn't say how many are in there. So you may end up taking some of this home too. <laughs> the chicken's still alive. <laughs> okay. You got to make sure you got to keep your eye on these because they'll they'll burn. Now look at the size of this one. Look at this poor little baby. <laughs> That's a, a breastette. <laughs> okay. It'll just start to get a little bit of color on it. That's what you want. You see, it just starts to get brown. You don't want it burnt. Let me get these in while well, his room. Okay, I have one more in there. I'm take the capers and I'm going to drain off the brine. So I'm just going to, there's not very much in there, so it'll come off. Or if you're real smart, you can get a strainer and dump them in. <laughs> but I don't, want to, I don't want to go look and find out where all the strainer is. <laughs> okay. Get that going. We're going to use uh, the zest of the lemon, and we're also going to use the juice. Okay, and that's going to make the, the sauce. That combined with, with white wine and some chicken broth. Okay, that makes the sauce. What happens with the, with the uh, in the pan, because there's flour on the chicken, that'll, that'll act as like a slight thickening agent, okay? So you won't have to add anything to thicken it up, okay? I can smell that ziti, I'm telling you. Okay, this is what it's looking like right now. So another minute or so, you know, it'll be ready to brown up a little bit. The other thing you don't want to do is you, don't want to, you want to make sure that you don't undercook this. Okay. So in order to get our dessert going, which is going to be basically a ricotta cheese cream uh, filling, uh, I'm going to have to use the food processor. If you don't have a food processor, you could, you could still make this. Just make sure you get some ricotta cheese that's very smooth. Okay, you, you can, uh, sometimes you can buy it at the deli counter and it's, uh, it's real smooth, kind of. And you can use a mixer to do, do that if you don't have a food processor. Okay. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I discovered uh, 
that was really great was, uh, you ever use a Ninja? You ever hear of the Ninja? Food, it's like a food processor thing. It's wonderful, it works great. I use it for almost everything. Okay, this has got some nice color on there. Okay, I'm gonna take that out. A couple of pieces were a little thicker, so I'm going to leave that in there. Get that last one in. The stove is so uneven. It's like all the oil is down here. Okay. So now we're going to clean up. Got the flour going. That's it. Dishes are all done. I am not a baker. I don't really like to bake. So when you have a dessert on these classes you take from me, you know they are the easiest things to make, okay? It, it usually involves ice cream, pound cake, fresh fruit, or some kind of cheese, okay? Um, I, baking to me drives me crazy because you have, you know, oh, oh, half a cup of this, half a cup of that, and then if you don't get it right, then the whole thing flops. Well, forget it. You know, I just, I, I'll make cookies. I like to make cookies. Uh, Especially like biscotti cookies because you make them in a big loaf, <laughs> you know, and you get like 24 out of a loaf, <laughs> you know, but, but if you have to make these little things that you have to decorate and, and you know, don't call me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's why they make eclofs. I don't do that, you know. Okay, so we get these going. That looks good. Okay, a couple more pieces in there. Okay, I'm going to turn this off because that is... I think I turned it off. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take that out because that... Okay. So, so there you have it, like a little brown on top, you know. And, uh, you know, at the end, if you had parsley that deer haven't eaten, you could sprinkle it on top, you know. Or you could serve a little extra uh, gravy or sauce on the side that people can just help, help themselves. Okay, that's so just about done. I'm going to take the other back up out of the oven. Okay, those are the ones I did this afternoon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the sauce in here. And normally what you would do was, is put all of the chicken breasts you know, you're probably not making for 12 or 13 in your house. So you put the chicken breast back into the sauce and let it cook so, that, so it gets covered, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these all in this pan, I'm gonna make the sauce, I'm gonna dump the sauce on top of it, okay? So, so it's easier for you and then you can just help yourself. Okay. So we have one more little breast in there that's waiting to to cook, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm just going to arrange these in a pan so I can get the sauce on them. That's just about ready. Okay, I'm going to to zest this lemon okay um, I have a microplane which works really well but I forgot to pack it so and make sure when you're zesting that you only get the yellow part you don't want that white part the white part is very bitter okay and make sure when you're doing this that you zest the lemon before you cut it okay <laughs> I've seen people cut the lemon in half, and then they, they're complaining, how am I going to zest this? I said, well, what'd you do? You cut it. You can't zest it now. So you have to start over. But 
I mean, it sounds like something really simple, but people do it. Okay, so we got got the zest going. Now these lemons are, are kind of hard, so uh, let's get that done. What you want to do is take the the uh, lemon, and you can either put it in the microwave for about ten seconds, or just roll it, and that'll start releasing all the juices. So what's happened here is it's got a nice little color on there. And you have in the bottom of the pan all the little brown, ugly stuff. That's where a lot of the flavor is. And that's, that's the flour that's cooked, and that's what's going to help thicken the sauce. Okay? So don't throw that out. You want to leave that in there. Okay, so what we want to do is called deglazing the pan, which means we're going to add white wine. And if you're not real crazy about using white wine, you could just use all chicken stock. You could do that, but, or vodka. No, you know, you could just, <laughs> but, uh, so I think we need about a half a cup. What does it say? Whatever. That's good. Most of it burns off. Yeah. I'm not going to do with the rest of it. <laughs> okay. So what you want to do is take your spoon and scrape the bottom, and you'll scrape up all those little bits that are in there. It'll start to calm down. Okay, I'm going to throw in the zest. And I wanted, I, I cut the chicken package open with that, so I don't know, you know. So then you want the juice. Now when you're juicing the lemon, just hold it up like this in your hand so that the seeds will stay in the top, okay? And then your hands will smell nice. Okay, give it a little tilt. Or you could use a juicer, which I have, but I don't know where it is. This sounds like He's but so if you hold, make sure you hold it up, because then the seeds will stay in. Or if you get the seed, then you win a prize. So. <laughs> okay, give that a little stir. And you can see if you could, you, I don't know if you can see up there, but you can see it start to thicken a little bit because of all the the flour that's in there. Okay, I'm going to add the capers. And remember, we're, we're doubling this sauce. So. Okay, and some chicken stock. I didn't add any salt and pepper to this because there was salt and pepper in the flour, so, but uh, we'll have to give it a little taste to see if that's what we need. But before I do that, I'm going to add, this is the sauce that I made this afternoon. And basically what I did this afternoon is I, I just made like a little roux with the flour and chicken stock because I wasn't, I, you know, I had fried a little bit of the chicken and got that going, so. Okay. Carolyn, you want to give it a taste test since you're a prize winner from the Post Journal Cooking Book Contest? Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> and then I'll taste it too, and then I'll tell you you're wrong. Ooh. Oh, good, good. You can taste the wine. 
That's good. I like that. Boy, you can taste that wine. Mm. Okay, so that's it. You can let that come to a, a little boil. I'm gonna throw that over here. Uh, move everything over there, and you guys can can eat. And then I'll get the stuff ready for uh, dessert. Find a big spoon for that, so you get a nice big spoon of that. Okay, that's coming to a boil. It's going to be ready. Okay, I'm going to take I'm going to take the chicken. I'm going to turn this off because that's all you want to do is just to come to a simmer. And I'm going to pour this sauce over the chicken. Okay, what I'll do is I'm going to leave these tongs in here. I'll put, there's a little spoon over there, so when you take your chicken out, you can pour some of the, get some of the sauce on it. And the ziti's over there, plates are over there, forks over there. Uh, now you have to get up again. <laughs> okay, the last thing we're going to make uh, for this class is a sweet chocolate ricotta, and we're going to use ladyfingers as dippers in it. So instead of a spoon, you're just going to dip that in there and eat it. Okay, very simple. We're going to use uh, ricotta cheese, and I'm going to pop this in the food processor. And I know the recipe says, you know, this will make like six or whatever. And this is just uh, Wegmans ricotta cheese. I, I like whole milk ricotta cheese. If you're, if you're fussy about that and you want to use skim or whatever, then don't eat this. <laughs> okay. But yeah, you could do, you can, you can make it, use whatever you want. You know, I just like the whole milk stuff. I'm not really into all that fat-free stuff. I mean, if you just, just eat less of it and use the real stuff. Because a lot of that stuff has sugar and all kinds of stuff in there. So, okay, so I'm going to throw in some cocoa powder. And this is sweetened cocoa powder. Okay. Just going to add that in. And then we're gonna, I'm going to process this a little bit so it gets smooth. Okay. So it kind of, if you can see, kind of looks like a thick chocolate mousse. Okay, we're going to add some other stuff into that. Okay. Going to add powdered sugar. And if you don't have powdered sugar, uh, you could put a little bit of a vanilla extract and regular sugar in here. What happens with ricotta cheese, though, is if you put regular sugar in it, it tends to get watery. Okay? If you don't have powdered sugar and you have a food processor in your house, put regular sugar in your food processor and process it, and you'll make powdered sugar. That's all that it is. Okay? So I'm going to put some of this. We're going to taste this at the end. So I'm just kind of like putting a couple of scoops in. And we'll see what it tastes like at the end. Okay, I'm going to put some orange zest in. Okay, uh, and then I'm going to juice this and put the juice in. You can use Grand Marnier, which is a lemon liqueur. I mean, uh, orange liqueur. You could use that instead of orange juice if you like that. Okay. I'm going to zest it right over the bowl so I don't have to dirty anything else. And again, you want to make sure you only get the orange part. Okay. Let me 
give this a quick process. I like I like the flavor of chocolate and orange together. As matter, they make a there's a candy bar that has chocolate and orange put together to it. Um, and at the end, uh, we're going to put some some uh, chocolate curls on top, some shavings. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Okay, I'm going to juice this lemon, this orange, whatever this thing is. <laughs> Doesn't have any rind. I, I can't tell what color it is. Let's see. Okay. Going to roll that again and get as much juice as we can. And. Ooh, this looks really good. Doesn't that look good? Looks like a blood orange. Okay. Okay. That's basically all that this dessert is. Okay. You scrape the sides down a little bit. Now this you could make the day ahead and leave it in, put it in a container and leave it in your refrigerator. Okay, if you want to get fancy with it, you could serve it in like little champagne glasses, put like chocolate curls on it and put the little cookies on the side. You don't have to use lady fingers, you could use any kind of your butter cookie, any kind of cookie you want. Okay. Okay. You taste it. I thought I didn't notice you back there taking a nap, huh? <laughs> but I'll run for some chocolate. Mm. Delicious. Tastes good to me. Then at this point, you could adjust it. If you wanted more uh, powdered sugar or more chocolate, you know, you can just adjust it. But this, this tastes good to me. Okay, so all we're going to do is put this in some little glasses. And let's see. Linda, you want to help me again with this? We we have we have six more in the refrigerator, so don't don't worry about that little container. Linda got here early. She helped me helped me put some of it together. So let's see. Get it over there. Okay. <laughs> I'll get these out. These are uh, lady fingers, which are just, uh, they use them when you make tiramisu. This is the, the crust in the tiramisu, okay? So you can find these right in the regular cookie section of the store, okay? Make some room. Now, if you want to make chocolate curls, you just take a regular chocolate bar or, you know, a thick, you get those real thicker chocolate bars. If I can get it open. Or if you wanted to, you could chop up, dice some strawberries. I put diced strawberries on top. You could macerate the strawberries in a little uh, orange juice and give them a little flavor, you know, and put that on top. All stuff you could do way ahead. Okay, you could, you could make it all ahead. So to make the curls, shavings, all you want to do is just take the, the chocolate bar and you, you take a potato peeler and you just, you just start going down like that. Okay. And then you just sprinkle them on top. Okay, so nothing really to that. I mean, that's pretty easy. Were you able to get seven out of there or six or whatever? Where are my fingers, ladies? <laughs> my hands are so warm, the chocolate's melting in my hands. <laughs> I 
That's the other thing they need to work on is the heat in this place. Holy man, it's hot in here. <laughs> okay, so we, we got those, you know, fairly decorated. Take these. Put one or two in, whatever you want. Then if you really want to get to the bottom of it and use a spoon, they're over there. So. Well, that was our class for this session, and I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something along the way. If you could not attend the class and are interested in the recipes, you can email me at nrizzo at roadrunner.com. I would like to thank Chicago Lake Central School, Mrs. Amy Redman, all my class participants, and my wife, Kathy, for her support in my many crazy endeavors. Thank you. <laughs>